Good morning, everyone. This is Sherry McFall. And this is the Bank Reconciliation Webinar. I know you've just all been excited uh, to learn how to do bank reconciliation in PeopleSoft. Um, it's a little different process than what we're used to, but that's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get through this. First of all, there's some tools that you can use to help you determine your outstanding transactions. And these tools are mainly queries, and this slide represents several queries for AP payment journal details, the cash receipt journal details, general journals, membership journals, payroll, trading post. These are all queries that you can use to help you identify your transactions and which of those are outstanding for your bank reconciliation. I'm going to show you a couple samples of how to use these queries. Let me just pull this down for a moment. And, um, and bring up, I've done several of these. This particular one here is a sample of a CellWise journal entry, or the journal details for Trading Post, um, LC underscore TP journal details. And this is uh, bringing that up into Excel. So you can see in this particular council, they've got their cash receipts, if you look at the cash column, um, identified by Visa, cash, checks, um, there's a Discover card, so that you can sort and filter on the line description and it will bring you up a list of all of your Discover card transactions. And this will help you with your bank reconciliation, make life a lot easier for you because as we know, Discover card, American Express, they clear the banks on different days than like MasterCard and Visa will normally clear on the same date. So this is a, to me, this is an invaluable tool. A couple of the other ones that I, that I have um, generated for you, and this is um, a membership journal as it com comes out in the HTML format. So this is the query. And if you notice on the query, I mean, it's got your cash account number as well as the registration and boys life account number. I don't really care for this purpose regarding the 2301 and 2302 account numbers. So I simply go and apply a filter, and I can filter on the account number 1001. And that is here is, I've downloaded it to Excel, applied my filter for just account 1001, and it breaks down my membership transactions, my withdrawals, EFTs if you will, and here's the dates. And then I can readily reconcile those transactions here to those on my bank account and identify the outstanding transactions. Another helpful tool that we have for accounts payable, I found this not too long ago, Search and Discover, is um, there's a report within PeopleSoft, and it is a summary payment history by bank. And you go into AP, Reports, Payment, and it, the report name is uh, Payment History by Bank. And it gives the payment date. And if I have the whole thing here, it, it separates them by check date or payment date. So you've got a whole list here. And then here's the checking account. So I verified that I've got the right checking account. The payment reference here is my check number. And of course, the vendor and the amount. So I can use this to reconcile my checks and uh, payments marked as manually paid in PeopleSoft. And then I can therefore determine 
which of these checks are outstanding for the month. So those are just some few helpful tools uh, and queries that you will need um, to help you have a successful bank reconciliation. Going back to the PowerPoint, back up, okay, so that's a list and you can use that list and the summary, de uh, summary payment history by bank within the AP section of PeopleSoft. For those of you that are using the PeopleSoft reconciliation for the first time after conversion, you're going to need to record your outstanding ScoutNet checks into PeopleSoft. And prior to conversion, we suggested that you printed out a bank reconciliation worksheet out of ScoutNet so that you could determine then which of your checks are outstanding. And here's a sample of the bank reconciliation report or worksheet out of ScoutNet. And by using this, you can take your bank statement and check off the items that have cleared the bank. And the only thing that we're concerned with at the end of this are those items that have not cleared. And you're going to need to make a general journal entry to get those into PeopleSoft. And to do that, the journal entry, I did this in Excel first. I Here's my cash account number, and then for each individual check, I put the amount in. In the reference field, I put the check number. And then, of course, I made this in Excel simply because then outside of PeopleSoft, I know then the name and when the check was issued. So I've got all these credits to my cash account for all the outstanding checks. Well, of course, we need a two-sided entry. So in order not to affect the balance in my cash account, I need to offset my cash account with a total of all the checks. So this is a total of all my outstanding checks. So net effect to this cash account is zero. But yet I'm able to record all the outstanding scout net checks. That must be done and posted in, in the month in which you're reconciling for the first time. Okay. Now we're going to use the information provided on our bank statement and calculate the amounts needed to perform the bank reconciliation. These, this information is critical because it does the calculations to, at the end when we go to reconcile to make sure that everything matches uh, PeopleSoft to your general ledger. Four pieces of information we're going to need to determine from our bank statement, the total deposits, our total PeopleSoft generated checks and those vouchers that we have marked as manually paid in PeopleSoft, Total membership and payroll withdrawals, those are your EFTs and your IOI deductions, as well as other withdrawals, and the other withdrawals include the ScoutNet checks that we just did the journal entry for in the previous slide. This is a copy of a typical bank statement. And on this particular bank statement, it's pretty easy to calculate the total deposits that affected my bank account. And right here it's highlighted in yellow. And I'm going to apply the code when we get ready to enter this into PeopleSoft as 174. Codes are critical. Do not get creative with the codes. Make sure you use only the codes that we've identified in this reconciliation webinar. And there again, I'm just making a note on uh, um, creating an Excel spreadsheet that I know that my deposit code is 174 and that's per my bank statement. 
Second, I'm going to go in and determine my PeopleSoft generated checks. So what I've done is I've highlighted those checks that I know were generated by the date, my conversion date. You notice there was a, there's a definite lull between 4.15 and uh, 4.30. These are the items, checks that I have generated through PeopleSoft. And they total 13,000. Next, I'm going to gather from my bank statement those items that I have marked as manually paid, my vouchers that I marked as manually paid, and they add up to $6,791.97. I'm going to add that total to my PeopleSoft generated checks, the $13,000, and I come up with $20,178.34 which I'm going to apply the code of 475. 475 indicates that these checks and uh, vouchers marked as manually paid were generated through PeopleSoft. And this is a um, spreadsheet. Here's my PeopleSoft generated checks. Here's my spreadsheet that identifies my vouchers marked as manually paid, and I've done the math. So there's my 20178 My other withdrawals that we're going to apply, code 697, that we are going to extract from the bank statement. There's my EFTs, or my membership withdrawals per the bank statement, as well as my IOI withdrawals. Add them together, and I'm going to apply code 697. I need to add now my ScoutNet generated checks to the other re remaining withdrawals as indicated on my bank statement. So per my bank statement, I've got um, my total withdrawals, I've subtracted out my PeopleSoft checks and other items marked as manually paid, and I'm going to apply the six, code 699 to this total. So in other words, when I take my beginning balance, my total um, checks paid from the bank statement, total withdrawals, um, add in my deposits, that should equal my bank um, reconciliation ending balance. So you're going to do a double check on your math. It's very important that you make sure everything adds and subtracts. Next, now we're actually going to go into the software, into PeopleSoft, and do our bank, perform our bank reconciliation. There are five basic steps to the bank reconciliation. First, we're going to enter our bank statement information and totals as we have prepared in the previous slides. Second, we're going to perform a semi-manual reconciliation. The semi-manual reconciliation reconciles those PeopleSoft generated checks and those vouchers that we have marked as manually paid through PeopleSoft. So semi-manual is the PeopleSoft uh, withdrawals on your bank statement. Third, we're going to perform a process that is select book to bank statements. And this particular process that we're going to perform will then take the information, all those codes that we put in, our bank statement information, and our semi-manual reconciliation details over to book to bank Fourth, book to bank reconciliation, what it does is it brings in all of the information in the, in the previous three steps, and it brings in the general ledger information. And at book to bank, we're going to perform a reconciliation on all those other items other than people soft generated checks and vouchers marked as manually paid. Fifth, 
We're going to print out our bank reconciliation report. We're going to have that signed uh, by our SCAD executive or designee. And then we're going to confirm our bank reconciliation. In the confirmation, the confirm process, what it does is it locks in the numbers so that the numbers cannot change on your bank reconciliation. Okay? It says, I'm done, I'm final. And what it does is it's going to send over to the next month your outstanding items. So it's very important to confirm your bank rec. Going back to our first step, we're going to enter our bank statement information. And the breadcrumb is main menu, banking, bank statements, and enter bank statements as indicated in the highlight, yellow highlighted area. Each month you're going to add a new value, put in your set ID, which is your business unit, then you're, you can do a lookup for your external bank ID or routing number, and then your bank account number. You're going to, the statement ID is going to be the month, in this case 04, the year 2013, followed by your three-digit council number. So this way we can identify that that bank statement ID belongs to you. If you have more than one bank account for this particular month, April, each bank account would have the same statement ID attached to them, regardless. So what we're going to do is enter the bank statement information and use only the codes that we've referred to. We're at main menu, banking, bank statements, enter bank statements. Now that we've added our statement ID, it brings up this page. The tab we're on is bank balance entry. And the bank ID and the account number come up. Make sure that the statement ID is correct. And the statement date is the end of the month in which you're reconciling. And you're going to add in statement code 010. And that, from your bank statement, is going to be your opening balance or opening ledger. Right from the bank statement, we're going to put in that amount. 015 is going to be our ending balance, or in PeopleSoft terms, closing ledger. Then we're going to go to our next tab, Bank Transaction Entry. And this is a slide that just shows you where I, here's my beginning balance and my ending balance. Next we're going to go to the Bank Transaction Entry tab. We're going to enter our deposit and withdrawal information using the codes that we prepared in the first few steps. This shows the bank uh, transactions. 174, if you remember, was our um, uh, deposits. 475 was our checks paid. Checks paid only include PeopleSoft generated checks and vouchers marked as manually paid. 697 included our payroll withdrawals and our membership EFTs. And then our miscellaneous debit, the 699, includes our ScoutNet checks and other journal entries. And there I've done a summary of my worksheet um, indicating the codes that I've put in. And everything, so this, I've brought all those pieces together here and I can attach this to my report when, after I've printed it. Now we're going to go into semi-manual reconciliation. Of course, we've got to enter our bank ID, which is our routing number, and the bank account number. Click search, 
And on the left hand side of the screen we are going to check a box next to the code 475. And on, this is the screenshot. Banking, the breadcrumb is main menu, banking, reconcile statements, semi-manual reconciliation. And what you are going to do first of all is make sure your dates are in, the bank ID is correct, the bank account number is correct. Click search. It will bring up this list here. And what you are going to do is place a check mark in this box next to the AP checks. This is what you are going to reconcile in this step. But most importantly I want to draw your attention over here to the right hand side where it says system transactions. Make sure that you, uh, right here, it is only showing one that I can see, but it says that this is the 76th transaction of 76. So I am going to have to pay attention to this view all. And when I select view all, it will expand this out so that I can view all 76 of my PeopleSoft generated checks and manually paid vouchers. I'm going to check the box next to each check that has cleared the bank. I'm going to click the refresh button. And the difference between the amount that we indicated in code 475 versus it's going to total up all those checks that I've marked as cleared and do the math for you and the difference should be zero. And then we're going to click the reconcile button. So here we've checked this, we've expanded our view by doing a view all, and we're going to place a check mark in the items that have cleared according to my bank statement. And if you notice, it will indicate whether this was a check or if this was a manually paid voucher. MAN says manually paid voucher. CHK is a system generated check. We go over to the reconcile and the difference here should be zero. So it is saying that every item that I have checked equals the amount that I have indicated from the bank statement. Now we are going to select our book to bank statements. We talked about this earlier where this is a process only. And what it does is it pulls all of our information that we have done in the prior steps together to perform the final reconciliation of all of our other items. What you will do is um, you will click select and calculate, click on, make sure that you click on the process monitor. And once you're in the process monitor, as with all PeopleSoft uh, items that go to the process monitor, you need to click refresh until the process is success and posted. And the menu for this is main menu, banking, reconcile statements, Select book to bank statements. There again, your bank ID and account number, the date that you, dates that you're reconciling, and then you come down. You can click search. When it comes up, you put a check mark here where it says select, and say select and calculate. Click on the process monitor, and at the process monitor, you click refresh until you get success and post it. And there again, these steps will now reconcile all other transactions other than our semi-manual PeopleSoft generated checks and manually paid vouchers. In the book to bank reconciliation, we are going to fill out the information and click the search button. We will need to enter the fiscal year, the accounting period, and click search. And then it is going to bring up um, where it says GL adjustments. It will have a details icon. We are going to click that to open up the details. 
So here's the screenshot. Banking, reconcile statements, book to bank, reconciliation. And here on the on the front page here we have payments and transit. Those are your items that are outstanding that, that you've indicated are outstanding in the semi-manual reconciliation step. Right now we're going to look at GL adjustments and we're going to click on this details icon next to the amount. Now those going through reconciliation for the first time, this amount can be very large and that's due to conversion. Everything, all your uh, data was brought in by journal entry. So we'll show you how to make this very quick and easy. It's a one-time thing after you've done it for the first time and cleared all those transactions, you won't have a large number like this again, so don't panic. Make sure to note the number of transactions that are included in this reconciliation and as we did in the semi-manual reconciliation, select view all if needed. So I'm going to show you that. And make sure now this is 6,001 transactions. We're going to look at the first 100. <coughs> A helpful hint is on this transaction DT, it stands for transaction date. If you click on this actual words, transaction uh, DT, you can have it in ascending order versus descending order so that your most current transactions are here on the first page, the first 100. It will make reconciliation a whole lot easier. The helpful hint here is to scroll to the bottom of the screen once you bring up your April, or in this case, April 30th transactions, my end of the month, and, I'm, and we go to the past. We're going to do a clear all. Instead of going through individual 6,000 items, we can do a clear all, and then we can go back and click on each transaction that has not cleared the bank. So here, same page, remember the transaction DT, we've got everything in ascending order, and we're going to click clear all, and all of these boxes will be blank. Then I'm going to go back and place check marks on the items that are outstanding. Now, in the event that you're not sure what these amounts represent, you can always click on the journal ID and it will open up the journal entry that created this transaction so that you can tell by reference numbers, um, check numbers, things like that that you've got in there what it's for when you're going through the has it cleared or not cleared status. Finally, we're going to click on the bank adjustments icon on the right hand side and we're going to uncheck all items. And what this does is we're going to tell the system that we have cleared, we have reconciled all of these items. So here is, we have, if you remember it went from like six million dollars over here on GL adjustments when we've done the clear all went back, it's now reduced to 22,000 in outstanding items. Over here on the right hand side, the bank adjustments icon, we're going to click on this and it will bring up this screen and what you're going to do is do a clear all and these check marks will then disappear and you say OK and it will take you back to your screen. And what it does is it will go out and do our calculations and make sure that our difference between our general ledger and our bank statement should be zero. Then we're going to click on the report button. We're going to generate a bank reconciliation report. And once it's approved, 
We can click the Confirm button to lock our numbers and prevent any other additional entries that will throw it off. And also make sure it brings over your outstanding transactions ready for the next month's reconciliation. So here we're checking to make our sure that our book to bank difference is zero. If you notice our bank adjustments is zero. To run a report, you click report and go out to report manager and print the report, and I'll show you a copy of that in just a moment. And then once that report is signed and approved, you can then click on Confirm and Save. At any time during the reconciliation process and book to bank details that you need to go out, uh, put it away for the day, whatever, click Save, and it will save your information that you have. So make sure to save whenever you're navigating away from this page. Also, a couple of uh, items that you may need to check from time to time if you're having problems reconciling, do some troubleshooting here, is at any time you can look at your ledger balance by clicking the details icon here to the right of it. And what it will do is it will bring up a page and show you the actual GL accounts that may end their balances that make up the ledger balance. So you can see the details behind it. If by any chance at any point in time you've got any unbooked payments, uh, especially, or deposits that pop up there, click on the details icon and it will show you that you probably have for unbooked payments maybe an AP trans payment transaction that is an error and it's sitting out in the general ledger is not posted, you'll be, you have, you'll be able to reconcile and clear those checks as applicable, but it will show here and that's a good indication. That means you've got to go back and make sure that you post these items. And then you can come back in um, and give us a call, and you may have to, you may need to recalculate. And recalculate, you simply go to Book to Bank Reconciliation. Before we get to the details page, there's a button that says recalculate. At any time that you get to this point, and I forgot a journal entry, I forgot the service fees, whatever the case may be, or you've got items over here as unbooked and you need to go back out, make sure your period is open, do your journal entries, and come back into Book to Bank Reconciliation, click the Recalculate button, go to the Process Monitor, click Refresh until success and posted. Don't just click the Recalculate and wait for it. Make sure you go to the Process Monitor and click Refresh until success and posted. You can come back in, the recalculate brings the new information over, and you should be able to, to reconcile your to success. Here is a copy of the Book to Bank Reconciliation Report. It's pretty much a copy of what we just seen. In addition, it, it lists all the items that you have indicated are outstanding, payments that are still in transit those types of things. So just as, as in ScoutNet, make sure your bank reconciliation report is approved, and uh, then you can come back in and click Confirm. At this point, I'm going to start taking notes. If anybody has any questions, please make sure you write them up here in the notes section to all. 